Hi, I'm Asif Farooq and this is Finextra at Cybos. I'm joined today by Tushar Chitra of Oracle. Thank you for joining us. So as you know, mobile is really the hottest topic of the industry right now. And where do you think mobile technology is headed? Asif, thanks for this opportunity. If you think about it, mobile started off with the concept of needing to have a phone which walks with you. So which allows you to be connected. Having said that, the next inspiration came from the fact that aside from the phone, what is it that you're taking along with you? Let's try and get those to come in. So it started by looking at, can we look at some aspects of security? Is there any possibility for us to do more? Can I take my laptop with me? And that's how the mobile started becoming smarter and smarter. That's one phase of evolution that has gone about. We have seen this leading to information being created. And the, the way the information is being consumed by the consumer on the mobile has increased dramatically. The next phase of this is where is the user wanting to take this? It's no longer a case of what is it that the mobile company can do. Today the momentum is being driven by what is it that the user wants to do with the cell phone. So we think that as we go along this path, there are going to be some interesting innovations which will come about. First and foremost, people don't want to share uh, just emails, it's becoming more and more of sharing your experience. You want to have the ability to, uh, you're on a holiday, share that experience. And share that experience started with pictures, move to movies. We don't know what's going to come next because it's uh, always, you know, you're looking through a crystal ball to figure out what's going to happen. But as you look at the innovations that are coming about, you want the device to get smaller, you want it to be much more closer and automated in sharing the experience. So you've seen innovations by Google around Google Glass. There is talk of taking the smartphone and making it more closer to your wrist. There is biometrics. All the three could yield multiple new ideas. I mean, the one idea that's uh, been toying around in my mind is, why would you not go about, uh, you're going shopping, if your specs could read, not just the price point, but also accept the, the that it's part of your basket. And as you walk out, all you need to do is, I'm paying, and say it, and not actually type, keyboard. Those are the kind of innovations that we think are going to happen in this industry. From a, as a technology vendor, it is good stuff for us. Because there are quite a few value propositions which come about for technology vendors as an industry. So one side, you need to slice and dice data. The second is, this is going to need uh, building and engineering of an ecosystem. For example, when I spoke about the example of going grocery shopping and you're looking at scanning a barcode by just looking at it, those kind of things are going to need an ecosystem of the bank, the grocery vendor, everything coming together to make it real. So that's where I think mobility is going to head, more and more of experiential banking. And what's the experience that you're going to do? And of course, we're here at Cybos where finance is key. So what do you think is the outlook for mobile payments? That's really the holy grail of where Cybos comes in, right? So for years, bankers have said a payment is a payment is a payment at the end. The evolution of payments and mobiles, we've seen phase one happen in this industry where you have mobile wallets. Uh, Apple went and did their stuff. We had NFC now becoming pretty much standard across devices. The challenge that you're going to face as this evolves is who is accepting the payment. I was reading a report about a month ago which came out about payments and mobile payments in the US which talks about 95% uh, of the transactions for payments on mobiles are currently happening only at Starbucks. Now, why is that so? It's, it's not bad. We should not be alarmed by the statistics. It's actually encouraging. Because the key issue that we are going to see going forward is how are we enabling the merchant for mobile payments? How easy is it going to be? The drive towards trying to build a few standards is where this mobile payments industry will start getting momentum. So if you look at it, uh, I blogged on Finextra just about last month and we spoke about uh, the new card devices that need to come in. There is a shift in liability which is coming about 
around the card space and more and more it's going to be merchant based liability. Now at this point of time, the device which is at the merchant end, the POS terminal, could be a good candidate for renewal. Now if you're going to renew it, why do we need to renew it only on a card based reader? Why can it also not be a mobile payments reader? That's where I think mobile payments is going to go. The other part of it, which is going to be more towards the experiential sharing, is going to be, how do you do peer-to-peer? -peer? Gone are the days where you want to share bank account numbers. You only want to know people by, I, I, I would rather start this with a question. Do you really remember half the phone numbers on your phone book, in the phone? So what do you remember about an individual to whom you have to pay? You know the name. Uh, likelihood is, is you're connected with them on one of the social media or you have their Twitter handle or you have their email address. How does a bank take this known information and enable payments from the mobile phone where you're able to originate a payment transaction by the device by just inputting uh, the Facebook contact, the email address. So I as the user should be able to just say this is my Facebook contact whom I want to pay, Mr. Bank. The rest is your responsibility. Sounds like trouble, but it's the opportunity for banking. That's where it's going to go. And what do you think are some of the key challenges for mobile banking technology? There are a couple of key challenges which start evolving. Uh, what we have seen in the initial experiment, I would still think that mobile banking right now is an experiment. It's just, let's have a tick in the box which says mobile is available. Banks have started off with a number of key projects which says, I have an iPad initiative, I have an iPhone initiative, I have an Android initiative. That's great. But with the Android space, the Windows space, and let's see how the iPhone progresses, the number of different types of handhelds that are available means that you're running 20 different projects, 20 different experiences. and Imagine a scene, you want to add five new functionalities to your mobile app. You're going to run 100 renewal projects. Let's say you are successful in those 100. At that point of time, you would have put up on the store the new upgrade. How many of your customers will actually bother to upgrade? There's going to be a strong possibility that half your customers are on the older version, half the customers are on the newer version, you are trying to tell the customers it's available, you're spending advertising money. That is where the root cause starts. Because if you're going to adopt change, and this is going to be the only constant with mobile banking, you need to have the ability to take the change initiative, deploy it and have it available on the air and ready for the customer to consume the very next moment. So if I feel that the next coolest idea is in my brain, it should be something I should be able to do today, launch it today, try it out. Doesn't work, we'll do something different. Experiments is the only reality in the current circumstances. So that's the key technology challenge in my mind.